It's time for your primetime forecast from Dr. Don's weather page in the Shepherd's Weather Center. Now, here's Dr. Don. Well, good afternoon. Here we go with your primetime forecast for Sunday, August 23rd, 2020 on Dr. Don's weather page in the Shepherd's Weather Center. Brought to you by Southern Union State Community College, Wadley, Opelika, and Valley. Cody Yarborough, Southeast Soft Wash, exterior cleaning experts. Also brought to you by BR Construction, Brandon Brown, now a licensed home builder. A lot of stuff to talk about this afternoon. We're going to start with the tropics. Marco, now a Category 1 hurricane from the latest update from the National Hurricane Center, upgrading Marco now to Category 1. And, of course, we also have Laura down there coming through Cuba. That will be number two that we'll have to deal with. Both of these storms are expected to make landfall along the south or south-central Louisiana coast within 24 hours of one another. 1933, the last time this happened. Well, the only time that it's ever happened, and there is some argument that it's never happened in the Gulf of Mexico. A lot of different data out there, but nonetheless, it's 2020, so who would expect anything any different? Let's start with Marco. The latest update from the National Hurricane Center location is 24.7 north or 87.3 west if you're tracking the storm, or about 325 miles south-southeast to the mouth of the Mississippi River, about 475 miles south of Lafayette, Louisiana. Maximum sustained winds is now up to 72 miles per hour. The pressure is 993 millibars or 29.33 inches of mercury and the present movement is north-northwest at about 14 miles per hour. And you can see that landfall will be around um, sometime between 7 a.m. Monday morning and 7 p.m. Monday afternoon. Uh, probably somewhere around noon or shortly after noon on Monday. Then we take a look at a couple of different products here. That is the track. And now we're going to take a look at the latest satellite shot from 22,000 miles above Earth. And you can see this is a pretty nasty looking storm, though it's not very large uh, in size. It does appear that it's growing in size. Uh, we do have a lot of wind shear coming out of the southwest that may actually uh, degrade Marco just before landfall on Monday afternoon. That is one possibility uh, coming from the National Hurricane Center. But nonetheless, this is going to be a major hit for Louisiana and then... 24 hours later, uh, they're going to have Laura come in pretty much the same location. Now, if you'll notice up there to the top of this satellite loop, the clouds are being blown off to the north and northeast. That's because of that shear coming in from the south and southwest. It could blow some of those thunderstorm tops back up across central Alabama and maybe even east Alabama and west central Georgia. But hurricane conditions or even tropical storm conditions are not anticipated uh, pretty much anywhere in central Alabama or east Alabama. But as the storm makes its final approach to the northern Gulf of Mexico, we're going to have to keep an eye. Any wobbles to the right or to the east, and all of that uh, could change. So we'll keep an eye on it. Here's the latest spaghetti model from the National Hurricane Center showing that most of the models are in pretty good agreement now that landfall will be somewhere uh, along southern Louisiana, uh, south of or south uh, to the southwest of New Orleans, obviously coming on shore there in the marshlands of the southern parishes of Louisiana, and then moving off to the northwest which should take it far enough away from Alabama before it turns back to the north where we won't see much effects across East Alabama or West Georgia from this one other than some rain. We could see some showers and thunderstorms. Just depends on if it takes this exact track, if it veers a little bit to the right before it makes landfall and just how strong that wind shear is coming out of the southwest blowing those storm tops off to the north 
and northeast. Even if we get some rain out of it, we're not looking at major impacts from Marco across East Alabama or West Georgia. Now, if you're going to be down there along the Alabama Gulf Coast or the Florida Gulf Coast, yeah, you could have a very stormy period down there and certainly some some rough seas and dangerous current situations. So here's the latest guidance on intensity. And you can see that most of the models uh, keep it right there below Category 1. Well, we know that's incorrect because we've already made Category 1 status. Uh, so those few models up there at the top that barely make it to Category 1 are correct uh, as we speak right now. But they don't hold it there very long as the storm should drop back to tropical storm status either as it's making landfall or just before it makes landfall on Monday. So let's go over and take a look at the next one that's coming in roughly 24 hours after the first one. And this is going to be Laura. Laura is currently located at 19.2 north or 73.2 west, about 70 miles northwest of Port-au-Prince, Haiti, about 95 miles southeast of the eastern tip of Cuba. Maximum sustained winds right now are 50 miles per hour, so uh, that's some 20 miles per hour below hurricane status. But Laura is expected to make hurricane status before landfall. Present movement is west-northwest at 21 miles per hour. The minimum central pressure is 104 millibars or 29.65 inches of mercury. So let's take a look at the spaghetti. We don't have a good satellite shot of Laura right now, hopefully by this afternoon. Uh, I plan on doing a weather chat live tonight with the absolute latest information. By that time, we'll have a good satellite look at Laura. But most of the models are still grouped pretty good on this one, making landfall uh, relatively close to where Marco will land, but maybe a little bit to the left, uh, maybe as far left as the Louisiana-Texas border. Uh, so that would be welcome. Now, this is the absolute latest information just in from the Hurricane Center, and they have shifted the track a little bit further to the west, which is good news for those folks in the area where Marco is going to make landfall. But it's still going to bring a lot of rough weather right over the same locations. And then you'll see the difference between Marco and Laura. Marco is expected to continue off to the west, maybe even turn southwest. Laura is expected to turn north and then back to the northeast after making landfall. Now, so I know what the question is. What does this mean for East Alabama and West Georgia? A tremendous amount of uncertainty. Uh, still out there with exactly what the effects will be for our coverage area. And here are the here are the caveats or the things that will make that decision. How large does Laura grow before making landfall? And I'm talking not necessarily in wind, sp wind speed or strength, but I'm talking in wind field size. How large a storm is Laura going to be? Right now, Laura is a much larger storm than Marco. Uh, if that continues and we start getting tropical storm force winds, uh, 75 to 100, maybe even 150 miles from the center, then obviously that's going to put weather a lot closer to East Alabama and West Georgia, but I still don't think it makes it. Now, exactly where Laura makes landfall, where Laura turns north, and where and when Laura turns back northeast and how large that storm field is with Laura, obviously all, all will dictate whether or not we see any weather in East Alabama and West Georgia. I certainly think that combining Marco and Laura, we do stand a relatively good chance of seeing higher than usual rainfall. Uh, if we start getting feeder bands spiraling around Laura 200 miles from the center of circulation, uh, then those could certainly come right across East Alabama or West Georgia as Laura makes her final approach to Louisiana. Now, the further west this storm tracks before turning north, the better off we're going to be. And just in the last update from the National Hurricane Center, they have shifted Laura a little further to the west. So if that trend continues, I would say that East Alabama and West Georgia is right on the edge of whether or not they may see some thunderstorm activity from Laura once it makes it inland and turns north. 
But if this trend continues and we go much further west with this track, then that's going to take East Alabama and West Georgia out of it. Now, there is a question about North Georgia, North Alabama. Uh, obviously, it's going to affect Tennessee and Kentucky because that's where we expect it to go. Uh, but if the storm does turn up there in Arkansas or around Memphis, Tennessee, and then rides right along the Kentucky-Tennessee border back off to the east, uh, then the mountainous regions up here in Tennessee and North Georgia, even over in the northeast Alabama, could interact with what's left of Laura, and that could enhance some rainfall rates across North Georgia. Now, you'll notice this one outlier out here, that pink line that still brings it in around Panama City and then turns it uh, right across east Alabama and then right across uh, Gainesville, Georgia, and then up into the Carolinas. That one model has, that's that model story, and they are sticking to it. I mean, they have been holding this one now for since this all began. That is what we call an outlier. That is very radical to the right. <laughs> and then uh, you look that everybody else, pretty much everybody else, is grouped up real tight. So that's the general consensus, and that's what you go with when you look at one of these spaghetti models. You don't pay attention to the outliers. You look at where everybody else is grouped, and that's where the storm is going to go. So don't pay attention to that pink line. I could see your hand raising out there wanting to know what that was. And that's what we call an outlier. So let's take a look at the intensity charts for Laura. Let me take that off so you can see it a little bit better. And this is interesting. Again, the intensity charts are just like the spaghetti models. You look for the grouping. The, the grouping is most likely or has the highest odds of being correct. So the grouping is right there at a high one, a low two. Uh, but you do see some outliers up there at the top. Uh, one takes it to category three, and there's actually one that takes it to a low end category four. Uh, those two options we don't want to see. Uh, we, we, wouldn't, we don't want to see a Category 2. We'd rather keep it as a weak Category 1. But I, the general consensus right now is a strong Category 1 or a weak Category 2 when Laura makes landfall. And Laura will make landfall sometime on Tuesday, probably Tuesday afternoon. Laura is just running the spine of Cuba. So it's staying over land for a long period of time. If Laura had stayed to the right or to the left of Cuba, uh, we could be looking at another mammoth storm here. It's going to be serious anyway, but it could be a lot worse than what we expect. So there's the latest update on both of our tropical storms and hurricanes that are coming to us. Again, if you hadn't heard, Marco is now a hurricane, Category 1 hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico and it is headed for Louisiana as well as Laura, which is still tropical storm status, uh, over Cuba, also headed for Louisiana. And as to whether or not either one of them affect our weather in East Alabama and West Georgia, it's a wait-and-see game. I think there is the potential, uh, but it's not going to be drastic either way, I don't believe. So here's your Storm Prediction Center convective outlook for your Sunday general scattered afternoon thunderstorms across all of Alabama and Georgia. Only risk for severe would be down there in Louisiana with the approach of Hurricane Marco. There is a marginal risk of severe weather down there. Here's your national map in motion. If you look close to the bottom, you can see Marco coming up and making landfall there along southern Louisiana on Monday afternoon. High pressure up there in North Carolina is what's shoving Marco back off to the left. Uh, actually, double barrel high pressure. You see one up there in North Carolina. Then you also see another high pressure system meandering around up there in Arkansas. And all of that is responsible for shoving Marco back to the left and maybe even back to the southwest after making landfall on Monday afternoon. We will hold on to a chance of rain through all of this. Anytime you have a hurricane approaching within two or three hundred miles, you're going to have a good shot at seeing some showers and thunderstorms. Dr. Don's weather page is brought to you by Micah Farr, elect Micah Farr Mayor, City of Roanoke. Also brought to you by Auction 431 South in Phoenix City, Joey Knight. Check them out on Facebook for their latest auction schedule. 
Also brought to you by Jimmy Stevens of Jimmy Stevens Construction, Remodeling and New Homes. Here's your Goes East Southern Mississippi Valley satellite shot, valid as of about 1215 on your Sunday afternoon. You can see those clouds streaming in, uh, being pushed north by that system, I'm calling it Marco, down there in the Gulf of Mexico. And these are basically high-level clouds, uh, not much cold, uh, not many cold tops there in the cloud coverage up across East Alabama and West Georgia. We do see some down there in Southwest Georgia and North Florida, then off the South Carolina coast. But for the most part, just scattered shower, uh, scattered clouds across East Alabama and West Georgia this afternoon, with a chance of a shower or two later on today. Total rainfall amounts ending at 7 a.m. on your Sunday morning across Alabama and Georgia. Better rain showers up there around Anniston, where they saw up to one inch of rain. A few showers and thunderstorms on your Saturday afternoon and Saturday evening across the rest of the area. Just a trace to about a quarter of an inch of rain. Here's the five-day total as we... Uh, should be taking into consideration what both of these tropical systems are going to do across the southeast, though I think this may be a little underdone, especially in Alabama and Georgia. But you can see that an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half, uh, certainly plausible across central Alabama and east Alabama, and then maybe approaching two inches up there in northeast Georgia. I'm not really sure that this particular model is taking Laura into consideration. Uh, I believe this is primarily going to be Marco, so maybe by tomorrow we can get a better look at what we expect down the road as far as rain's concerned. Dr. Don's weather page brought to you by Mr. Jamie Dukas, your Alpha Insurance agent. Check him out on Facebook as well. Rick and Becky Rainwater of Remax Lakefront. Here are your temperatures. These are the expected high temperatures for your Sunday afternoon across East Alabama and West Georgia. Roanoke goes to 86 as well as Wadley. Wedowie tops out at 85. Woodland 85. Ranburn goes to 84. Birmingham hits 88, 86 in LaGrange. And we'll do 88 this afternoon in Tallahassee. Here's your Southern Union State Community College live Doppler HD radar. This is valid as of 1218 on your Sunday afternoon. And you can see that we do have quite a bit of shower and thunderstorm activity down there in northwest Florida, the northern Gulf of Mexico, also back over toward the Alabama Gulf Coast. We will zoom in and show you this region. You see very heavy thunderstorms now approaching Panama City. We've had several marine warnings this morning for possible water spouts down here in the northern Gulf of Mexico. Now, folks, if you're down there vacationing, there is no reason to vacate. Even over here in Alabama, uh, you're fine. We're not expecting hurricane conditions anywhere in north Florida. Now, keep a very close watch on the latest weather information because any shift back to the right of Marco, and that could change. But if I were down there, I would stay put. I wouldn't be leaving right now. Uh, could change, though, so stay abreast of the latest information. But also know this. The seas are very rough down here, uh, nasty rip currents, uh, so not a good time to be in the water. If you're on the beaches of South Alabama and northwest Florida, most likely those double red flags are flying. That means stay out of the water. Uh, but other than that, uh, okay to go down on the beach. Just be mindful of these big thunderstorms. And you see lightning coming across uh, the Gulf headed in your direction, then, yeah, it's time to go inside. Lightning can be deadly there just as well as it can be anywhere. Big thunderstorms coming in at Panama City. We see scattered thunderstorms all across northwest Florida and even back over here at Gulf Shores, Fort Morgan, Orange Beach, uh, the Gulf Coast regions of Alabama. Look at... Louisiana preparing for landfall somewhere in this general area on Monday afternoon. Already getting big thunderstorms down there. So this is going to be a long duration event for the state of Louisiana, especially the southern half of the state. Back up here in East Alabama and West Georgia, not much going on this Sunday afternoon. That could change as we go throughout the day. You see these showers and thunderstorms down here in southeast Alabama and southwest Georgia that are developing at this hour. 
And all of that's going to be pushing back off to the north, maybe a little bit to the northwest. So uh, a scattered thunderstorm or two later today across east Alabama and west Georgia uh, is certainly a good possibility. Here's your Southern Union State Community College future cast radar, and maybe not. <laughs> Seem to be having some issues with that radar loop. Let's see if we can fix that right quick. And we're going to be looking for Sunday. Let's see if we can get Sunday to pop in right quick. And there we go. Wow, isn't that amazing? We start this at 1 o'clock on Sunday afternoon, and it runs through 1 a.m. Monday morning. And just as I was telling you on the live radar, uh, watch some of these showers and thunderstorms move up from the south into East Alabama. And that's going to be late this afternoon or maybe even to the overnight hours. And then here comes a blob of rain that gets in here early on Monday morning. Uh, so we do have some heavier showers and thunder showers, maybe around 10 a.m. Monday morning. And then we have uh, a break in the action. Then we'll maybe have some more forming down here around Eufaula and Columbus on Monday evening. And that may migrate up into East Alabama and West Georgia by about midnight on Monday night as well. So, uh, yes, certainly could see some showers and thunderstorms from Marco. Dr. Don's weather page brought to you by Joey Knight. Anchor roofing, free estimates and free inspections. Neil Johnson, superior heating and air conditioning. Superior service for superior customers. Here are your current conditions across East Alabama and West Georgia. Wind is currently calm. Humidity 58%. Temperature is 86 degrees. We have fair skies with a few scattered clouds. Dew point 68. 10-mile visibility, sunrise this morning was at 6.11, sunsets this evening at 7.18 p.m. So here is your six-day forecast from the Shepherd's Weather Center on Dr. Don's weather page. For Sunday, that's today, this afternoon, a 40% chance of a shower or thunderstorm. 86, your afternoon high, down to 71 this evening. A 30% chance of a scattered shower this evening. Then for Monday, a 40% chance of a shower or thunderstorm. 83, your afternoon high. We have a 30% chance of a shower on Monday night. Then on Tuesday, I think that's when Marco will be um, moving on back into Texas. But Laura will be making its closest approach to us. So I think we go 60% chance of showers and thunderstorms on Tuesday, 86-year high. Wednesday, a 40% chance. Thursday, a 40% chance. And then as Laura turns back to the north and east and makes a pass through either Tennessee or Kentucky, um, again, we could see an increase in shower and thunderstorm activity on Friday because of that. So we've got you at about 50%. Here's your extended forecast on Sunday, the 30th. It'll be hot, 91 your high with scattered afternoon thunderstorms. We'll hold on to that type of forecast pretty much all the way through Tuesday, September 1. Then on the 2nd, uh, we'll just drop back to scattered clouds, a few clouds in the morning, 92 your high, Thursday mostly sunny, and Friday the 4th back to scattered afternoon thunderstorms with a high of 94. Dr. Don's weather page brought to you by Judy Albridge, Shepherd's Fine Jewelry and Gifts in downtown Roanoke. Mike Fisher, re-elect Mike Fisher, Mayor, City of Roanoke. Folks, I just realized on the scroll at the bottom of the screen, our daytime high and our overnight low is inverted. I'm hoping you were able to figure that out. It's showing the overnight low for Sunday night and then the daytime high for Monday. Don't forget to go to drdonwx.com. You can find all kind of cool information there. Got a lot of tropical information over there as well for you folks that are following our two tropical systems. You can also go to God's Country. We have a page for God's Country at drdonwx.com. There you can download the Mixler app and then Bluetooth your phone to your vehicle radio and listen to them anywhere in the whole wide world, just like they're sitting in your front seat with you. <laughs> As long as you have internet access. Go check them out. God's Country. 90.9 FM. Also, don't forget to go to the top of this video. Click on Dr. Don's Weather Page YouTube link. Go over there and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll be notified next time we go live for severe weather. 
If you would like to support our efforts here at Dr. Don's Weather Page, please go to paypal.me forward slash Dr. Don WX. I appreciate everything you guys do, and we would certainly love to have you on board as a supporter of Dr. Don's Weather Page. Hey, I'll probably be back on Sunday evening with a weather chat live to update the latest information on Hurricane Marco and Tropical Storm Laura. So make your plans to be with us probably sometime around 7 o'clock Central on Sunday evening. We'll see you back in here then on Dr. Don's Weather Page. Oh,